shown it twice. Yeah. We're seeing it once again. Up in the top left, we have from Team Mouse Sports CC, Hazuab, the, the yellow Protoss. Tenacious Protoss. Tenacious P. That's what I would call him. Uh, you know, someone, he deserves a tribute. <laughs> you gotta believe. He's already got the player there. profile. Just a matter of opinion, bro. Galaxy is the perp. The God, pinks are you, in the bottom you missed right. it. You I don't do know what know, I did. I know exactly okay. what you're talking about. I just don't. I just. I just don't want to go with it. You don't want to go with I'm that. I'm taking the high road. What do you mean the high road? I'm taking the high road. I'm staying positive. You know who else is staying positive? Galaxy. He's going for a six, six pool, a seven pool, a how six pool. He's going for a six pool. What? He's going for a six pool on Tyler Malter. Now, Tyler Malter six pool is kind of legit, actually. I don't think it's that cheesy. I think. Go on. I think no, 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 no. Here, here's what happens. On Tyler and Malter, okay. it's a lot harder to cover all your bases because of the way the the ramp works, right? There's not a lot of areas mm -hmm. that you can protect. It's really difficult to sim city. As a result, a lot of players resort to ten pooling, not necessarily six pooling. But the idea is to reset the game economically. Now, the big difference might be that Galaxy uh, might not end up droning. It might just send everything to try to kill his opponent. But, I mean, Hasselwabs is really good with this kind of stuff. He even has uh, a probe, but really early scout. He's got mm. two probes scouting. I think, actually, six pool is the only way to play this map as Zerg. Wow, he's getting a gas for Extractor Trick. Yeah, Extractor Trick. Yeah, he's going to squeeze out as many Zerglings as possible. And this is going to come down to the very last few seconds. If whether or not Hotswaps can get out of a cannon. Oh, and Galaxy has a drone in position to deny anything. But you yeah, can see immediately... No. The you're the you're always going to do this. Yeah. You're always going to put the pylon over here. That's why actually people have been favoring, but very few people, but people have been favoring gateway expansions on this map. Yeah, and the whole idea is you kill the forge and make them play one base for a while. Yeah. Um, and it's just pretty standard. Well, uh, it's the, the important thing to focus on is actually the third base. That's why you do not uh, go into regular macro plays from here. It's because the third base can't be taken similar to Stefano's build. If you go and take the third base over here, you're dead to any form of two base, two base, two base, two base aggression. Yeah. Uh, and, and in that Whoa. fashion, obviously, you're just going to get killed. Yeah, the probes defend it very nicely. Yeah. Now, uh, oh, if Hoswabs gets that cannon up, a huge different story. Hoswabs is going to try to lock it in, protect his forge. Oh, he's running out of probes or running out of minerals, though. Yeah, oh, it doesn't actually get that. Now, that could have been very epic indeed. That would have been almost guaranteed win for Asu, but now he's forced to just play one base for a while. Now, what again, people are like, well, how did Hasu recognize that? He didn't even scout his opponent. Well, he sees a super early drone scout. Like, that is just so no, he, suspicious he, he on he every did, level. He did, he did prep scout the six pool. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. I was on his vision. I was watching him the whole time. No, really? Okay, even if you look at his vision now, he has no, he doesn't see anything. If, it, if you look at House Wab's vision right now, okay, Go he's on. got he's got he, he doesn't see the Turk base. He even didn't see the he haven't seen the outskirts of creep. Okay, give me odds. Give you odds. Give me odds. No, we're not right now because mm. we're we're casting a game. Well, Don't that means bring you're your not confident. Matters you're, into it. you're not confident. You're not confident with your call. I'm confident with my call. I'll give you ten to one. Ten All to right, one. Sure, ten to one. <laughs> so if you're wrong, you owe me ten bucks. Otherwise, you owe me one bucks. No, it's up the stakes a little bit. No. Let's see, 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. See? You're not confident. I don't understand. Okay, sure. I just... <laughs> All right, <laughs> give me 20 bucks then. Because he didn't see his base. And he's... he's I know, but he saw the six the six circlings. Eight circlings, uh, actually. Whatever. Boom. He also saw a really early, insanely early drone scout. I'm just saying that. I'm just pointing that out. It's another indication. I'm giving another yes. way to try to identify something. Go for fifty. Go go. Well, if I five dollars, I get five. I have to give him five dollars, but he gives me fifty. Go go. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Andre. Andre finds any way to make a quick buck. Plays Diablo three. Tries to play poker, et cetera, et cetera. You can see two more gates coming out of Hasu. Wait, is that is that making fun of me? No, just okay. saying. Okay. Okay. I'm pointing out. I'm pointing out. Wait, fun facts about Andre. All right. We can see Hasuwabs versus Galaxy. I don't know why you gotta turn this personal, man. That's exactly that's why, Andre. You just asked me if uh, that I, I just like to all I like to do is make a quick buck. <sighs> Whatever, Andre. You can see that three gates coming out from Hasu. Now he's trying to uh, get up enough units to expand. 
And you can see Galaxy is getting up his speed and droning up as per usual. Now, the thing about Tolerate Malter is hard to get your third base, hard to eventually expand. And uh, so you're going to have to two base for a while. The drone count does favor, or sorry, the worker count does favor Hasu, though, just because Galaxy went for a super early pool instead of a 10 pool. So in this position, um, we, we basically always have to have Haswabs poking out, making it look like it is some sort of pressure build. The problem right now is he hasn't been able to set up Simpson at 3 gate. Um, 3 gate pressure is like sort of okay, but it, it doesn't really, um, you, you know, excel like 4 gate or even 5 gate. So the big problem that exists right now is actually selling that it is actual pressure. And I think Haswell is just going to take his expansion from here. Uh, it's going to put him significantly behind. I think 2 gate pressure would have been the better way, not 2 gate pressure, but 2 gate play would have been actually the better way to be safe about this and take the expansion as fast as possible that way you can just keep chrono boosting out uh units and uh you know play from there see hasu is now walling off immediately and uh getting his next down and it's pretty much standard hasu he's not going to try to all in although that's kind of the psychology that hasu uses sometimes too remember when he played against show and ended up yeah. forking him even though everyone expects hasu to play for the late game non-stop Galaxy droning up pretty comfortably at this point. Now, the one thing that does give Galaxy some comfort is that uh, the map is cross position, so there's no, uh, I mean, at that point, he doesn't have to necessarily expand closer to Protoss. He can kind of keep his distance for a while. Um, Why is he working on those rocks in the bottom left? Is he going to expand there? That would be really peculiar. Wow. It could be, yeah. Uh, no, I thought that was the drone over here. I don't know, actually. Um... Yeah, it looks this like he's going to gear up for an expansion eventually. He might expand to the bottom center and move to the left. Because normally people will just focus on these to shook the rocks ASAP, but yeah. he could be looking to do some sort of spire tech. Actually, I'm, I'm almost positive we are going to see spire tech coming out from oh. Galaxy. And, and uh, the thought trade. process is, yeah, you base trade, but you have expansions not only in weird places, but on opposite corners. And I think Hasselops wouldn't think to go scout in this bottom left-hand corner. Another place he would probably want to put it is this top right-hand corner. And that way, what you do is you say, okay, well, Protoss, if you want to actually attack one of these bases, your units are going to be so far out of position, I can go ahead and base race with you. And you're taking an expansion, I take your whole main and natural. You see that Hasuab's getting up more gateways and just making immortals, making a strong core army. That way he can never really be confronted with raw Roach aggression. But, I mean, Roaches aren't that great on this map. Just like you said, um, this map is really good for those mutas. But more specifically, mobility is king on such a large map. And with speedlings and mutas, there's lots of rooms to also transition as well. Just because we've seen players like Dong Regu, they go for mutas, kill your next eye, and try to force you to all in, and they can have a lot of scouting information, pick off sentries, fought with banelings. It's just mm -hmm. a very flexible style that you can do. Sometimes even switch back into roaches if you feel like you've killed enough stuff. Honestly, I love Dong Regu's style. I yeah. think it is probably. It was just uh, disgusting to watch. Yeah, it's it's probably the best Zerg style to see against Protoss. It's like it's situation where it's like, oh, Dong Regu just lost because all of his mutas are what? Wait, what? He's he's winning? How is he doing this? It's it's absolutely insane. Immortal is gonna almost get picked off here, but reinforcements will help out against <laughs> four Zerglings. Of course, additional Zerglings were en route, so he doesn't want to actually. Um, confront them with just the immortal. Zerglings are going to get over here to the left-hand side. And what they're trying to do is just establish if uh, his opponent is going for some sort of really quick third base. Of course, we know that he isn't. Haswell's behind this is getting a robotics bait and a twilight council. Colossus are important when you're going against mutas, but not at this time. You want to be focusing your gas on getting as many blink stalkers as possible. And Fernand, you were right. Bottom left-hand corner, you have the hatchery down there. Yeah, and uh, that just makes a lot of sense based off Galaxy style. In fact, he's going to gas it up and immediately saturate it. You see, Galaxy, he's not exactly the most drone-heavy Zerg in the world. In fact, he's been on pretty low econ concerning this whole time. But Galaxy does have pretty good information. His two changelings have been gone unnoticed. Hasawabs, he, uh, he suspects something. He's keeping his stalkers really close to his nexus. And, uh, I mean, at this point, he's like, well, mutas are really good on this map. You saw a lot of spine cross at the front of the natural as well. It's another giveaway that Galaxy is usually teching behind it. Correct. Mutas have revealed themselves, and that's pretty much nothing really that, uh, that can do too much damage. I mean, Hasselab's in great position. The main it. difference between this build and, let's say, the Dongre Gu build is Dongre Gu really sells it with this creep spread as well. He shows a ton of creep spreads, similar to how you would see in Circling Roaches, but then, uh, obviously, 
doesn't go that goes Whoa. Meters. Galaxy wants to pick up that pawn to deny vision <laughs> to his opponent. Yeah, that's an important pile on there. Yeah. Uh, but mm. unfortunately, it just takes so many losses. Those mutas are very expensive. You need to be careful with that. But just the fact that mu mutas are out at this point, Whoa. or mutas are out at this point, it makes it so mutas. difficult for Protoss to ever push out. Who are you trying to mock when you say mutas? No, I'm not mocking. It's uh, it's what Sake says. Oh, he says mutas? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Rotterdam says it every single time. I thought he says mutas. No, like he says mutas. M e u m e w t a. It's like mutas. Mut. Oh, he mutas Rotterdam says it, but huh? then he'll say like in for a tribute. I to love how the way Kiwi Kaki says these like mutalisks, mutalisks, and it's uh it's so cute the French Canadian accent man it's really cool. And uh, we can see that Galaxy is moving into the back, and this is really awkward SimCity uh, to protect really with the stalkers, but the Blink Four does push back. The, the Mutalist, at least for now. Now, the big thing is that this will force Hostel to turtle for a long time, getting his Storm tech and whatnot, but this is kind of what Galaxy wants. He's getting up to four base, joining up a lot at this point. Now going to hit up to 90 drones in just a second. Uh, Galaxy, what what can he really be worried about? Nothing, really. He knows exactly what Hostel's Ops is up to. got full vision of everything. Sees the robotics, sees uh, pretty much everything. And there's nothing, I mean, he can plan this out accordingly. He doesn't want to stay on Muta for too, too long, though. Hasselhoff's is nothing. just playing a style that, like, um, tries to get the ultimate army composition, and he's hoping that the Zerg opponent, Galaxy, will just overextend in the amount of Mutas he actually makes. Oh, great force fields over at the third, and oh, wow. traps every single Zergling. That was easily 25, 30 Zerglings. And then uh, Galaxy lost all of them, but of course Galaxy just remakes a lot of his supply in those Mutalisks. Now Galaxy now has a pretty healthy drone count, making another spine crawl wall just in case Haas was going to uh, counter push in some sort. But Galaxy has great firm map control. And uh, there's pretty much nothing that Hasu can do, so he's just going to turtle on three base and get up that huge army composition just like you said. But I, I'm just really confused because I feel like Galaxy has so much room to do more. He can go up to Hive really quick. And he can do he anything can do he wants, anything. right? Like, he can do anything. Hostel is playing so passive, and Galaxy's just choosing to make spine crawlers. Galaxy can probably go up to 10 bases, and he doesn't have to worry about anything, honestly. Yeah. He like, is. He's now double expanding on different corners. Right now. Which is so intelligent. I mean, that's, that's what you sh should do when you realize, oh, my opponent has taken such a late third base. Uh, and he's still not opting to push out. Let me go ahead and take advantage of that and cut muta production actually. Just go um, 100 drones and just start banking. Banking like crazy. Mm -hmm. Now the mutas do dive the main, trying to eliminate some of those probes. Hostile was forced to evacuate. Back at home, lots of upgrades and tech uh -oh. finally drop for Galaxy. Uh -oh. And there's more units there here, oh, but their storms the storm. are waiting. And you can storm a huge pack of those mutas, really putting them in the yellow and orange. Now that means three, four more storms will really end those mutas. But of course, Galaxy content with keeping the probe count low. Look how many workers killed 22. And controlling this map beautifully. Galaxy, this is where the distance of the map really comes into his favor. Absolutely. And look at this. Hasselhoff is actually going to push out, thinking he has the better army composition. He is behind in 50 supply. Let's look at that army supply, 99 to 109. So very similar. Uh, of course, Galaxy has that nice wall of spine crawlers uh, to, to oh. obviously deflect anything. Oh, huge storm. nice storms. Wow. And he's going to also blink forward and really try to cap us on that. High tempo are really driving those mutas away, but at this point, there's not that's not that bad of an idea to trade some of those mutas in if you can get some of those other tech units out. But Galaxy's dropping way more spine crawlers. In fact, he was up at 90 drones, but now he's got 23 spine crawlers, either in production or up. And it, that is just gonna be an absurd account. Hasu can't attack into that, especially with just gateway units. Yeah, what's additionally important to note is that um that Hasselops has no clear push direction. He doesn't know where to attack. If we look on his screen, he sees that there's a bottom left-hand expansion. He should go ahead and just assume Zerg has every single expansion up on the map. Because, I mean, like, he's left him alone for so long. And, uh, oh! We're looking for that money storm, I know. Yeah, I mean, he's, it's, as long as you can get the initial damage of the storm, it just lowers the Mutalist life by a significant amount. But Hasu, 
He has his entire force at the bottom half of the map. This is exactly what Galaxy wants. He's gonna start picking off each base individually. Hasu Ob's always oh, high temper gets sniped at the natural as well. As you can see, Hasu doesn't even care. He's just gonna move his army into the center, try and see if he can get into position and start hunting down Galaxy's bases. A huge part of Galaxy's supply is indeed in the mules. He's got 32 mutas. Boy. And he pokes up there and just sees, no, thank you. 51 mutas <laughs> oh my gosh. are on the field. Hasuov uh, smiles and says congrats, realizing he can't hold up this base trade any further. Oh, nope. And the wrong winner graphic is up because Galaxy has won this game number three. We'll get there. What? Let, let's do it. All right, so Galaxy. G -G G -G Galaxy. Galaxy takes game number three. And the winner screen is coming up right now. GG. They just GG'd us <laughs> at this point. <laughs> game number three goes to Galaxy, a pretty self-explanatory map. We explained the strategy from the beginning. Yep. Base trade, mobility, uh, keeping Hasuobs down, low economy, taking over the entire map. Played to perfection. Galaxy from get go. Six pool into macro. That's the kind of guy he is. And, and, and that's the guy, the the guy we pool, can expect. I mean, uh, I hope everybody gets it at home. You explained it in the yeah, beginning, but six pool is so important because standard. you need to stop the high base economy really, really early. So force your opponent to play one base against one base and then slowly get the two base against two base. What that does is forms the armies relative to the bases rather than just trying to macro, expa uh, macro expand or macro explode. And that way you reduce the, uh, I guess, the effects of that destructible rocks because obviously you can't do the Stefano style. There's no good place to put the Stefano style and uh, you just obviously die from there what's, on. Uh, what's so important too is that it's, it's not only just because of like the way the map is geography, but because it's so hard for Zerg to take a third. And so from that point on, if you play two base versus two base, it's just really tough to kind of have that situation. So yeah. that's why it's a good build. And that's why it's a good game. And that's why we're going to thank I buy power, the PC company that powers NESL broadcast. Visit I buy power to buy your own pre-assembled PC. We'll be back with game number four between Galaxy versus Hoswabs. The best of five. Galaxy's up two to one. Hoswabs cannot afford to lose a single game, but he can still make the comeback, and you have to start from game number four, which is coming up in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this.